JJ makes a bedside cabinet out of leftover 18mm plywood. Alright, we've got uh, four rough cuts of 18mm uh, plywood here, left over from a job, and they're all pretty much identical sizes. So today I'm going to show you how to make a simple bookcase bedside cabinet, or what you will just to give you an idea of the basic skills that you need to create something like this. So we don't uh, waste any wood. I'm going to just split one of these pieces in half. And it's uh, 61 centimetres or 2 feet. And so I'm going to split that. It's the 30.5 centimetre mark. I've marked on here my pencil marks at the 30 and a half centimetre mark with some pencil behind me here. So <coughs> now what I'm going to do is use the saw. These saws are all very good because they've got you can either use that edge there to make a 90 degree or you can use that edge there to make a 45. So you can either go like that to make a 45 degree angle across there or straight across there. If you use, make sure you've got a good square machine cut side and then if you put that, line that up with your marks and if you just rock it around like that slightly then hopefully you'll get it in the right position and your marks show that you've got it absolutely at 90 degrees. So we mark that across with our pencil and then to make it easier when you're working on your own, as most of us, and many of us do, you use a so what we call a solo clamp, which we then push this little metal bit down, it widens the jaws, put that and hold the wood and squeeze the trigger, and that squeeze it really tight, and that squeezes it and holds the wood nice and tightly to the bench. And then we put our, our glove back on. And then we use the saw to cut it off. Um, I tend to use this uh, nine point saw which is a sort of more traditional tradesman's saw because it cuts quite quickly but when you learn it sometimes pay, as you can see that, to use a saw which has a finer cut so it has more teeth per inch or per centimetre than the bigger one which means a it uh, does less damage to your hand, but if you've got your gloves on you should be reasonably safe. Uh, but it also so it means that uh, it, it's easier to get started and uh, cuts a finer, finer cut, so you don't do so much damage to the wood, but it just means you have to cut a lot more slowly. But it's a good way to start. Alright, so I'm going back to my brand new saw with all the nice blue writing on it. And this solar clamp, as you see, is a bit in my way. But unfortunately, I'm a bit restricted by that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist it down the other way. And put it underneath. I'm going to pull the wood out a little bit more because otherwise the solar clamp is going to get in the way of my saw when we get that bit closer to the clamp. So I've turned the clamp upside down, turned it up all nice and tight and then we will just pull that through. If you put your gloved hand against the line like that and use your gloved hand as a guide then you can get started and just follow the line and blow the saw out of the way so as you can set your line. Near the end, I'm not sure that the clamp isn't in the way of the saw. If you can hold the two pieces together without sawing through your finger, so you keep the saw down and then it gives you a bit of space there. You can, there. You can hold the pieces of wood together and just find them through. And that will stop them. Stop them dropping on the floor. 
first off, come off quite clean. So, so to release the clamp, as you can see here, but underneath the the very bottom there, there's a sticky out, quite a reasonably bright metal bit. If you use your finger and just pull that up, and that'll release the pressure, and you can take your clamp off. Very, very good when you're working on your own. So that's now given us our two bits of wood which will form the top, sorry, the bottom and the top of our little cabinet. Now bearing in mind that all the wood we're going to be putting together is uh, 80 millimeters thick, what we're going to do now is to use the width of the wood here as a template and mark very faint line there but I just marked a line there 18 mil in from the edge and I'll do the same on this side. See that better probably. Nice line there. And then what we'll do is we will pre-drill in the centre of these this line, this gap we've created with our three millimeter drill bit like so, and that'll stop the wood splitting. So we're going to drill the first hole about 50 millimetres in. I'm drilling onto the old uh, workbench, I'm not too bothered about it, but if you're drilling on something that uh, is important to you, you can put a piece of scrap wood underneath the centre of the... So basically about 9 millimetres in, in the centre of about 50 up and then a third one roughly in the centre. The more accurately you measure them the more tidy your piece of work will look. Now I've just turned the piece of wood over and where the drill has come through I'm just going to use this clever little thing here which is called a countersink. So it's a funny little dome shaped thing with all the little things which you probably seen in your box of tools and wonder what it was. I'm just going to count a little bit into the ply. That, I don't know whether you can see it there very easily. Might be able to move it around a bit. You can just see that there's a little indent there for the screw head to disappear into. That'll make it tidier and then if you want to fill it then with filler, wood filler or filler depending on whether you're going to paint it or keep it stained then uh, it will make a, a tidier tidier job for you. When you're drilling your holes in try and make sure that the drill is as upright as possible. If you've got a set square like that you can use that to keep the drill upright and if you just put that against the drill it should keep it reasonably Right. Something you'll gradually get to learn as you go along when you get more confident. So we've now got our two pieces nicely uh, drilled and uh, countersunk. So we'll put those to the side for a moment. Now these are the uh, longer sides of the uh, little cabinet. So at this stage before we put the top and bottom on it's best to decide where you want your center shelf to go so we need to measure that and then we can put our little blocks into position which will then hold the shelf but it's far easier to put the uh, shelf uh, little shelf buttons on at this stage rather than try and put them in later on where you're a little bit more difficult to get your drill in and get your hands in there etc etc so for this purpose i put the length of the block in that should hold the, the uh, shelf nice and steady and assuming that where this little label is which you can't see we go up there let's assume that this is the going to be the top edge that way that's going to be the top so then you have your single hole for your screw to go in at the bottom and your two screws there going into the side panel of the uh, 
cabinet and we're going to use 25 millimeter screws and they're 25 three and a half screws we're not going to pre-drill these you can if you like just 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 ever so slightly into the wood but it's probably not that necessary for this purpose because they're fairly thin screws the main thing to test is that the screw that you're putting in isn't too long for the thickness of the wood so that's just about perfect all right so those have Put that a bit there, so those little blocks have been put on with 25mm uh, 3.5 screws. The main thing is to make sure that they're level that way, because otherwise you end up with a humpy diddly shelf and you don't want a humpy diddly shelf. And we'll do the other side and then we'll be ready to put the cabinet together. If you want to be sure that you've got it, uh, your block level, you can always put your trusty saw across again and use that as your as your guide or just use your saw and put a line across and then you've got an accurate guide to where to put your block. So we now put our, our base up against the uh, flush in the front here, we'll call this the front of the cabinet. It's best to keep one side really nice and flush uh, just in case the other side's a bit dodgy. Um, and then we're going to put in these uh, 4 by uh, 45 mil screws to hold it all together. You'll probably find it easier just to start the screws off in your pre-drilled holes. Make sure you go in from the counter side. The screw looks a bit cockeyed. Just make sure they don't go through right the way through to the other end because otherwise the boards they won't join up together very accurately. It'll make life a bit more difficult for you. for a more a robust job then use the uh, two inch screws but these I think should be fine for this purpose. Most of the weight will actually be down on the uh, on the screw itself so it's got nowhere really to go. So now what we're going to do is we make sure that the front and the side are all flush there. Push that the screw in there nice and tight and then the key to it is to get this other edge get the two boards together nice and tight and then screw that in and maybe just give that another little tweak if it's not absolutely perfectly tight there, it either means we've got the angle slightly wrong or uh, the edge of the wood has not been very well cut, which that should be a machined edge so it must be something I've done. Alright, once again I've put the uh, screws in through the countersunk bit of the hole and they're all through into the wood but just make sure that they're not coming out of the bottom because then it should all go together much better. Now we'll turn that over again. We've got something nice and tidy to work to. And then once again we'll get our front edges now changed. Actually our front edges now on this side over here opposite side to where your camera is. So we'll get that nice and tight and square. There you are and now you've got your finished little bookshelves or bedside cabinet made out of basically leftover or scrap wood. And that's a solid little bedside table or shelf which hasn't cost that much to make. Really the cost of a few screws and a couple of brackets for the shelf to sit on. The rest of it I had effectively anyway and you get the satisfaction of knowing that you've actually built it yourself. You can just see the little brackets under the shelf there but I've also added a final 
25mm screw in through the bottom into the shelf to hold that nice and tightly in position. And that's repeated for all four brackets. This is 18mm uh, plywood so you've got the lamination of the wood which some people find attractive, other people don't. But if you don't like it and you want to cover it up, if you look at uh, my video on uh, beading then it will show you how to cover that with an 18 millimeter bead. If you don't like uh, the 18 mil plywood laminate edging uh, to cover up the, uh, the plywood edge, you can use my uh, be uh, beading YouTube video, which shows you how to cover this with this 18 mil round half round bead. Beading makes a nice tidy edge. Thank you for watching the uh, video. Please uh, do subscribe because hopefully if we get enough subscribers and enough followers it will enable me to help Acorns Children's Hospice further and also Mind. So please do subscribe. Thank you very much indeed for watching. There will be many many more unusual and hopefully interesting and informative videos in the future.